officially number one in Division 2, at least for now. Because, again, Ancient Tribe did drop a series earlier on against ITB. So D2 Hustlers, one game away from being first place, temporarily at the very least, is Ponlo. Going to run right into the side of Hustlers. Oh, oh, Glimpse is there, but Disruption will be able to save. Ponlo going to be just fine to walk himself out of this one. Uh, a very scary kind of scenario there for Alliance for a moment. Yeah. Man, if Ponlo just fell. Oh. Just I'm feeding a Slark. One free Agi already before the runes even come out. Not the best feeling. And that does force out the Scorched Earth from the Doom, but you probably don't mind. You kind of sometimes dip into that level 1 anyway. So S4 shouldn't be held back too much. Doesn't look like we're getting too many shenanigans for the runes, although... Hustlers are in a position to get more for their trouble here. I mean, S4 is setting up. Thing is, it's kind of hard for him to move in. I'm gonna get, I, I guess Yuma's probably not going to go for Essence Shift yet anyway. Ponlo's going to move in, disruption out. In fact, they might even try to make a play onto Hakoda, who does get caught by a Jewel Breath and Alliance. Are the ones to secure first blood, as S4 does get it on the uh, on the Doombringer. That's a, a very strong start here for Alliance. Yep. You find first blood, you're feeling good. You do manage to just tr trade even in the bounties as well, so you don't really get a big advantage, but you're more than happy on Alliance. Like, that is a good gold injection to have on hand for S4. Rush up that ring of health, sustain his lane a little bit better. And again, you're seeing just how much more these supports can do early on. There's more control, there's more threats coming out. Yuma with a level 1 Scorched Earth to fight up against. As a melee hero, it's not great. Like, until you can kind of tank up and start to trade properly with the Essence Shift, it, it's always going to feel a lot better for the Doom here. So you're, you're really going to have to rely on Hakoda to try to give you some spacing out. And even then, once S4 has that Ring of Health, well, he'll just sustain fine. Ponlo's there to save if things get dicey anyway with a disruption. Yeah, even bottom lane. It seems like Thea Lacor's immediately going to go for a creep. Pull, but misses, or rather loses the aggro for a moment. Might even go for a double while he's at it. Gets a courier with the uh, with the trade throw. Very nice from Thea Lacor. Should reveal that he may have a ward in that area somewhere. Small cap. Is it going to aggro the creep wave? It will. They kind of lose the creep wave for a moment, but they can wait for the small camp to, to kind of die before they pull it over again. And Divai Lama this time will take over. Two range creeps on this creep wave, so Hanskin going to try and make it as difficult as possible for Divai to farm this up, as now Thea Lacour's having issues apparently. Lag issue here is he will qu quickly reconnect. I, I wonder, like, Divai Lama, surely he doesn't try to meet the wave, right? Like, you, you'd much prefer to just drag it back towards your tier 1. But he may just meet the creep waves because it is underneath the tier 1 tower already. So you could theoretically yeah. get a triple wave towards the dire side if you do meet them here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a triple stack wave. It's not the easiest lane for Charlie as well. If, if the Timbersaw can start to commit onto you, he can melt. Early levels in Time Walk don't feel amazing. You could try to punish actually with a Time Dilation build instead. Stop the spell spam. From the Timbed, that can feel a little bit better in this lane. Maybe a 1-1-1 or a 2-1-0 build by Tree. And you can just kind of sustain fairly fine on Charlie with not too much threat. But until that level 2 time walk is up, then the Vylama can just kind of threaten to rip you apart. There is enough burst on D2 Hussers down here. And a triple wave will just kind of rush their level 3s, which will feel even better. But the Vylama will just drag it back to zone tier 1. Just get that steady farm going. Meanwhile, mid, like, this is the one name we haven't really mentioned too much. Chuen against Xantic here. Very, very even affair between these two players, as they are 9 and 9 in terms of CS. Xantic finding a bit more denies, but still pretty even affair between these two. Water runes, either side's gonna get one each. I'll tell you though, Xantic, like, at the very least on this Pugna, doesn't seem to be struggling whatsoever. Like, Chuen's the one that maybe is falling slightly behind. And Xantic, even if he can't really harass the Ember out because of that Flame Guard, he still can be just infuriating with his Decrepify. Yeah, it's still annoying and oh, Chuen is holding back and using the Slide of Fist whenever Decrep is up. 
more than likely just no, does no damage, but it animates true. Which does stall the Top. Ember out a little bit. S4 in trouble. Thunderstrike is there. Hakoda, though, being turned on now. Yuma had left the building because he's got so many creeps, but he's going to go back in after Ponlo. Problem is, he does not have Pounce available. So he can't really secure a kill. Does lose a, a few creeps there while chasing them down, but now goes for the Pounce. Sadly, he does not connect onto S4. Meanwhile, Hakoda back on a Ponlo. Looks like they will finally get something for their trouble. But the kill will go the way of the Disruptor. So Yuma probably not going to be very happy with the fact that he's just missed a lot of CS. Because they were chasing those kills instead of just going for the farm. Nevertheless, at least they get Ponlo as a, as a kill. Yeah. He missed out on quite a fair bit, but you find some punishment. You don't mind on S4 though. Like he's just healing up in this lane. He gets ferried his little infused raindrops as well. So he's going to be able to sustain through some of this damage a little bit better coming out here. And he has the level 2 Scorched Earth, so this is not a good feeling for Yuma. Oh, nice pounce. Threads the needle. So, some great body blocks were coming out from Alliance. I thought there was no way out for Yuma, but he found the angle. Very, very nice indeed. Just so important he doesn't die after having a bit of a slower start. And now Hakoda really giving it to Ponlo, but they are going to try again onto Yuma. Yuma this time immediately will just back his way out. But Alliance really trying to assert their dominance here in the top lane and... Doing a pretty decent job of it as mid lane. Chuen is going to go down at Xantic. Barely able to get the final right click in time. <laughs> and sadly for the Jakiro Hanskin, not only is he going to get tipped, but he's now in danger. Because Xantic is rushing for the water rune. He's going to pick it up. So Hanskin needs to run. Very nice body box from Thea Lacour. Yeah, really lucky uphill hit as well from Xantic to get that kill onto Chuen. And he's really dominating that lane. Not the not the result I expected, but it is hard to play for Chuen. If he is disarmed and can't use his side of fist as well, then it's just dominance coming out from Enzantic. Sure, there is still this timing for the Ember where he gets a minus armor in hand, you just melt, but he doesn't even have that value up yet. Tealacore is dropping a bit low, but not gonna be enough to kill him off. And with that kill for Enzantic, he's gonna hit six fast. The level 2 Decrep plus Life Drain on Ember, even with that Flame Guard, it's just going to disappear so damn quick. The damage is quite overwhelming. That it is. I want to already here for D2 Hustlers. Devi Lama down in that bot lane. He's having an extremely good time. His mid lane, once again, they are going to make the play onto Chuen. That glimpse may have actually kind of helped him out there. Oh, the Thea core. He has Avalanche. It won't be enough though, Chuen. He does get the bottle off and... So Thea core can't really get within range to, to try and get the Avalanche off anyway. Or even Hans can showing up now in the mid lane, trying to deny the power rune away. They're still trying to fight over this as Ponlo shows up topside, but Hakoda... Well, they're going to realize now that the, the power rune was at down the bot rune spot. And Zandik's not even going for it. He's actually going for the kill onto Hans. Could, and that'll allow Chuen to be able to pick up the regen rune. Oh, it's Ooh. the night off as well. That's disgusting. And Xantic <laughs> just giving nothing away. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's the one thing with Pugna, right? It moves so fast. 375 move speed, which is the arcane boots up. You can go across the map so quickly, deny off these runes. Chuen does hit six. So he's in a much safer position now in this mid lane. Probably not going to need as much assistance. But all that time that Hanskin's gone, and Charlie's forced to deal with the Vile Llama solo. That is a bit of a tougher time for the Faces Void, although at level 3 time walk, not as bad, much more manageable for the Faces Void. And he's about to hit 6, so there's a kill threat they can leverage onto the Vile Llama if he drops low enough. Twin. It's gonna be okay. Hanskin shows up here in the mid lane, but probably wants to get out now because the glimpse is coming. Dakota will catch him. Hanskin. Still trying to run. The life drain just sucking the life out of Hanskin and Thea Lacour. Oh, needed one more hit. Couldn't quite get there. Chuen can try and turn now. Decrepify, they're going to make it harder. In the meantime, Yuma is going to drop top lane. Ponlo able to secure the kill onto the Slark. Meanwhile, Hanskin is still being chased down by Hakoda. He is alive though, and Thea Lacour is the one to go down. How unfortunate. In fact, Hakoda... He's not out of the woods yet either. 
He's trying to run, but Ponlo knows he's around here somewhere. Not getting the vision though, Hakoda doing a very good job of duking him out. Should be okay to back out of this, I think. Though he doesn't have a TP, so he's gonna walk out of this. They're really starting to commit a lot on mid. Uh, Twin? He's uh, just denying off the power rune, but it is a nice glimpse away. Miss Chuen still able to secure the Invis rune up, up top. Yeah, I mean, he could try to rotate. I don't feel like you really want to leave mid once you do. Xantic is just free for that push. So a presence must be maintained in this area. Your side lanes are going all right anyway. Like S4 has his meteor hammer. He's pushing in top, no problem. And the 1v1 for Charlie is much more, it's really manageable with the time walk maxed out. The Vi can't really look for a kill opportunity as well. So you're just kind of keeping everyone tied up on mid, ensuring that there's no big plays that can come out from the side of the Hustlers or from the side of Alliance. So you're just free to farm. It just boils down to a farming game. And for a farming game, Alliance feels a lot better. With a Faces Void, with a Doom, these heroes scale really well. And there's no one stopping S4 from just getting Meteor Hammer usage off. Like it's, that tower's gone up top. And it is. Uh, I don't really know how to feel about the uh, the Doom Meteor Hammer, but you know, I, I guess any hero can pick it up right now. To be fair, so the stats are so damn good. Dakota, caught by Ponlo there for a moment. Might actually be in trouble because Twen has rotated. Looks like he will go down as Hans can able to pick up the kill here on the Jakiro. Nice little pick up here from Alliance. So you'd much rather pick up a core if you can, but you know, even a support's good enough for now. Now, yeah, you're taking away map space on the side of D2 Hustlers. They aren't really fighting into this. Again, they've been running around the map, trying to focus on mid, slowing down Chuen as much as they can, enabling the game for Xantic. Xantic is showing down bot, so he should just go for that push coming out here. His mana sustain isn't really there. He has the Aether Lens up at the least for a little bit more regen, but the early mana pool of the Pugna is really not the best for just constantly spamming. Doesn't feel like it's quite enough. And with this early map control for Alliance, again, this game feels pretty controllable. They don't have the network lead, but it's also a very marginal read right now for D2 Hustlers. They're not really running around just yet, although certain items are coming out. The Vi Llama, with the early Hood of Defiance, is going to be once more really hard to burst down, even though you've got magic damage on hand on your support. So he should start to be able to do typical Timber Saw things that we saw from game one. And despite all of these things happening, Yuma is also just farming decently well. He is behind Chu Wen, but he's still ahead of Charlie. And Charlie is trying to go oh, for the cover lane. Midas as well. On low, will drop Xantic. A bit of pick up the kill here on the uh, on the Pugma. No problems there as Ponlo just very, very deep pushing out that top wave. S4 is around the corner as well, but they aren't gonna spot him out. Maybe looking towards seeing if he can pick up that Pugna, but Xantic does have help around him, so it's not very advised as S4 gonna pop the Scorched Earth and Scorched Earth and just run. It'll be okay. We'll make it out. They, they won't be able to get within uh, range to give vision for Hakoda to get the glimpse back. But yeah, I mean, my fear for Alliance comes from Divai Lama again. Because this guy is just getting complete free farm. Like, he's currently high-fiving Charlie in the Radiant Jungle. It's just concerning how much farm this guy is getting, right? Like, he just gets left alone. And we've seen how much impact this guy can have. Like, it's... It's very scary. To, to play against level 30 Timber, especially after what he did in game one to you. Just giving him this much farm once again. I mean, a free ride to your Sanj and Kaya. Just way harder to pin down. They'll try for a smoke play now. They've got Chrono, they don't quite have macro power, but they should have enough damage for a softer target here. Static Storm is dropped. Chrono is there though. Charlie, he's gonna find a Xantic. That's the big one. The Pugna gets caught out. Hakoda will also get caught out in Alliance. Off to a great fight. Luckily for Thea Lacor, he does at least pick up a haste rune. So he's going to be okay to back his way out. That's a perfect chrono here from Charlie. Catching out the Pugna. And there's just no counterplay towards it. It's the big one. They needed to get some of these kills going. And now they can start to pressure onto mid. I mean, they've got the meteor hammer for push. Fortify is used up. But they're, they are starting to apply that pressure. And it does feel like for Hustlers, if 
If the Vilama's not joining in these fights yet, then you're waiting on Teal Lacor's blink, because no one can really set up for its Xanting all too early on. Like, you can try to rely on that Glimpse Static Storm, but they were far too close together, giving big value out for Charlie to just commit that Chrono on. And it's, it's recovery for Alliance. Like, the Midas is fully up for Charlie. He's farming into the Maelstrom, so full farm mode for him. He's going to be fine just building up. No one's really threatening him. He's not being ganked. There's a lack of control for him. If they had the Static Storm again, perhaps, but... It's almost off cooldown, it's just that Xantic hasn't really left mid. And he still wants that mid tower gone, but he's not been able to. They're doing a good job of counter pushing just with the Jakiro to ensure the creep wave doesn't stay long enough for him to feel comfy nether blasting the tower. They're still trying for that mid tier one alliance. I mean, they're around, but whether you can actually posture aggressively against Xantic is a completely different story because just keeping maximum range away. Sadly for Xantic, he was like 1 HP away from getting that tower, so it does get denied off here from by Hanskin. Mid lane though, they are looking to set up for a team fight. Dealer calls in with the Avalanche. Ponlo will save the, with the disruption onto Hanskin. And now with the Ice Puff to lock down Thea Lacor, he is gone. Nice pick off. Is S4 now going to be targeted by Divine Lama, but cops the Doom. They might even try to chase down the Timber, but he will save the life of Hakoda. There's now the turn. Back onto the Doom. S4 is going to get a tip here from Divine Lama. Glimpse is back as well. S4 going to pop the Meteor Hammer now. It is actually going to land onto the, uh, the Timber Sword, but he is going to die. Yeah. And they committed a lot of spells just to kill off the Liquor. Uh, Chewin? Yeah, I mean, he bought a blade mail. And Xantic tips him for popping the blade mail during life train because it literally does nothing <laughs> to the yep. bug mail. It's, it's, it's a funny I thing. I hope he didn't buy the blade mail purely for that. I don't think so. I think he... It, it's very useful against the timber saw as well, right? Reflecting some of that pure damage back is pretty solid. It's more armor up against a slark. It protects you from almost all the cores. So it feels pretty alright. It gives you a little bit more right click as well for your sleight of fist. It's a good acceleration item to just give you more damage. It's an okay item. Again, you just probably don't want to pop it in the life ring because it just looks a little bit funny. Just a bit. That it does. Give us a good laugh, each one. Mid lane, smoke is their alliance. Gonna try and make something out of this. Some wards down around the dire jungle. Divine Lama very far forward, but he's not really the guy you can afford to make the jump in on. He's the only one far forward at the moment, so you may have, you may have no choice in the matter. Static Storm has oh, been boy. dropped. Twin, he got caught in that, but Divine Lama, maybe taking a bit too much damage, will be forced to chain away. S4 actually caught him with the Meteor Hammer, but Divine is still running. And he's fine. I mean, at least he didn't drop too much, right? Like... You drop the macro pyre, that's pretty much the, the most valuable spell you really throw out. Yeah, they, they have enough sustain and saves here. On Alliance, it, it's not easy to go for these kills. They're not really able to come trump Hakoda, but they've got room to go back and try to meet your hammer down the tower. This force around, they're going to have Doom in a few seconds here as well, so this could be a big fight. It doesn't feel like Hustlers can sustain true with all that commitment coming out. At least Charlie's not there, and he has no TP point for the Chrono, but the tower falls fast. That it does. Hustlers kind of struggling to find a way to defend this one. I'm going to have to let it go down for free. Mind you, Hustlers right behind Alliance. This is a bit of a pincer maneuver. Who are they going on? Chains around from 20. He's trying to set up for his team. But Yuma, he's around the corner. Nice Ice Path going to connect on two. They at least find one. In fact, they've got Divine the Lama as well. Massive fight so far for Alliance. Still find the Tiny to boot. The Lacor going to go for a run, but Charlie, he's in. He found the Chrono on the Pugna. That's the target he always wants to aim down at an Xantic. He is just going to drop. Even worse news is The Lacor lost his Courier with a Blink Dagger on it. That's the timing they needed, you know, the, the tiny to initiate, the tiny to start standing up, find these, find these openings for the team. Losing that courier for a fair bit of time, a minute and a half, 
That's a pretty nice opening for Alliance to feel oh. safe here. Oh. S4. Goes for a TP play, gets glimpsed back immediately here by, uh, by Hakoda. Not that it means anything, it's just very annoying here for S4. He has to walk the old-fashioned way now, and we'll top lane. Twin. And he gets caught for a moment. I'm not sure this silence lasts long enough, and it does not. He's okay. Yeah, you, you can't press them down too well. The flame guard up and running, it's more than enough protection for him to survive through a lot of this output from Xantic. If he had perhaps the level 2 life drain, it could just melt it, but at this point, not quite there yet. Yuma, he's kind of surrounded here. It's a bit slippery though. S4. Oh, he'd love to find his Slark. Sadly, though, S4 does not have Doom up. He could still set up with the War Stomp. He does have help behind him. If they can chain stun this one perfectly, they might have a shot at killing him off. S4, very patient. Does go for the War Stomp now. Count was committed early by Yuma, but obviously landed on S4, but he's going to cancel his TP off, realizing there was still a nice path. Very messy engagement from both sides, but Yuma is going to be okay to back off. Again, if they had Doom, that would have almost been a surefire kill, but sadly it was on cooldown. Okay, Top lane. Not quite there. Chwen's trying to move in onto Hakoda. Realizes that Xantic is still around. There's a glimpse back. He will rem it away, but Xantic now on the chase still has the vision. Chwen, a nice juke out with the slider fist, but in comes the Lacor. He is trapped from all sides. Huge pick up for Hustlers. Because in the meantime, Charlie almost ends up dropping to the Via Lava. He even laughs in the old chat. <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it. You, lo you love to see that all chat coming out. I mean, the Via Lava is, you know, he's probably known for his timber saw and his pubs as well. And he's, he's just been a beast. I just want to call out the fact that Charlie typed Raffle, but he did not crack a small, Jonathan. <laughs> Not one smile was, was made that day. Uh, you know how it is, Mike. So you just type it, you know? Even if, it, even if you're not actually laughing, you just type it. You're laughing inside, Mike. An inside laugh. No such thing, John. No such thing. Yeah, for, yeah, for someone's joyless as you're sure, you can imagine that, Mike. No. <laughs> Yuma's got the angs up now on the slark. That's a nice power spike. I'm not even going to address yeah. your, your stupid comment, Jonathan. Go on. Ah, oh, you're so joyless, Mikey. It's okay. We understand. And the Ags is going to be great. I mean, this allows him to actually play with his team now. I like that he's going for the Mage Slayer. Just more security against his magic damage as well. Alliance are trying for another cheeky smoke. They do have the Doom ready this time around, but... They don't really have the Ford Vision to catch anyone out. They might catch the Vailama. Yeah, they may. He's going to load us all up. So he's going to make life a little bit more challenging, but not really that challenging as Charlie will hand the tip <laughs> over as the Void. Poor old Divine Lava's confident here on the Timber. Yeah, they didn't even have to pop the Doom there as well. So you hold on to that big spell usage for the next fight. You do have to blink up until the core, and they're still gunning for a fight. They, they were under vision. S4 is still under vision. Hustlers, lane, jump in, avalanche toss combination from Thea Lacor, but the ice path going to put a stop to the life drain, and now the Doom being committed. No, it wasn't. He didn't commit it. Life drain out. They even found the Ember now. Sadly, the pounce is back on cooldown to Chuan. No, he's not going to be able to pounce in time. Or rather, Remnant in time. Charlie, a nice chrono, but the Decrypt oh, players are on Atlantic. He's not going to be targetable. Instead, they'll try to go after the Slark. They will get him. Atlantic trying to run. Charlie trying to chase him down, but no. He goes under the high ground. That's his BKB gone. I think Charlie's feeling a little bit afraid now, as he is going to drop. Oh, God. And Hanskin, he's not making it out either. That is massive. D2 Hustlers, again, it's that timing. You've got the Mage Slayer, you jump in with the Ags, you've got the Pounces, you've got the Range. You punish Chuen early on. And the Chrono looked big, but there was a targeting issue. Like, he kept trying to run out onto Adzantic. Couldn't really get it. I mean, you get the Slark in the end, but the Pugna strives in these long-term fights. And 
S4 not being able to use the Doom, he hesitated on the first cast. When he tried to recast it, Static Storm flies out on top of him. So he's not able to lock in that Pugna. Their targeting has been so on point from Alliance. Like, as long as you kill off at Xantic, you have a nice shot at these fights. You take away the Decrep, you take away the constant life draining on you. But at the one time, and Xantic shows off that BKB, it falls apart and they smoke. They know without Chrono. This could be a tricky fight for Alliance. Like, yes, they have the Doom, but the Chrono is the big AoE control that they've been struggling against here. Oh, no. Could be the target here. Not quite the hero they'd like to go after, but they'll make the jump in. Even dropping the Static Storm. Disruption. Gonna make it hard to glimpse him back, though, but eventually Ponlo will drop. It takes them a bit of time to get it done, but they'll get it done eventually. Meanwhile, the Core ends up going down. So... Bit of a trade going on here, more so in the favor of Alliance as they do get Four? the tiny down. Still, another trade happening as S4 is going to drop Ooh. the Doom, but it will lead to nothing. That insult to injury, he dooms himself as well. He does. simplifies that kill even further for the side of D2 Hustlers. And they force out Doom, so both Chrono and Doom are down. Chrono up a little bit later on like only a few seconds away so that aoe control will kick back in but this time no doom you can still manage chrono as long as Xantic is outside it so you can still play aggressively here telecore he's had a bit of a rough time you really want to be able to come in with a tiny and blink around him getting picked off probably slows down any further aggression here from the side of d2 hustlers but now you have your own blink up in the Vailama, and he's going straight for the hex right after you, you've got follow-up control from another source. You've got another way to set up for these fights. I love this read in line, so Chrono ready, smoke up, go for another play. You've got the BKB on Charlie. So he's gonna feel go. safe. Hakoda. I mean, he's in position to break the smoke. Joan, to show himself for a moment, the rest of the line's still kind of holding up. S4's not with them, by the way. Not quite yet, he isn't. Mind you, he doesn't have the Doom anyway, so I guess... All, he's, all he really offers is a, is a war stop as they make the jump in on Xantic. Still a huge kill if they can get it. Xantic going down, decrypify in time. BKB, Ooh. but no, Charlie. Still get through him. Meanwhile, Hakoda, also caught, is going to be okay. Had the glimpse to save himself. They got the Pugna, though, which is all that matters right here. They'll be very happy with that alliance. They've still got their spells, so straight into the Roche they go. And Chrono's still off cooldown. They can kind of just take it with no worries about repercussions from the side of the two Hustlers. But the Hustler side, Yuma's just trying to push down Bot. So you should find a tier 2 in exchange for that first Roche. But two lives on Charlie is going to be a big deal. And they can control him, but now he can pick and choose when the Chrono comes out. He can jump in. Try to burst someone down first. If he dies, Chrono afterwards. The Dito Hustlers clump up a bit too hard. They manage to take down the 8 second BKB charge of Exantic as well. With that play, I think uh, it, the Debonic Purge is kind of you know, holding him back, forcing him to try to just bail out even after popping the BKB. Couldn't really go for like a life drain play on hand. And despite all these back and forths, it is still a really even game. 15 to 13, 26 minutes in, less than 1k lead coming out for the Hustlers. Oh, there goes Hanskin. You've got a full pipe uh, pipe of inside up now on, uh, on Divine Llama, so there's a nice way of kind of mitigating some of the magic as... Oh, they have found Charlie. Yuma, he's got the double pounce up. Charlie forced to Chrono to try and save himself and do something in this fight. Life Drain's gonna be there, Yuma, he's gonna remain perfectly fine. There's just nowhere near enough damage. Charlie's gonna jump in again, but this is not the team fight. They don't have Chrono to play with, so they have to leave. That's the thing, like, you kinda see what happens if you don't catch Xantic in that. Even if he can't Decrepify, he can just Life Drain his ally. Yeah, just heal them back. You can't out-damage that healing right now. Just the level 2 Life Drain, but more than enough to sit through the output on Charlie, which isn't that high. And Faces Boy just doesn't do too much just yet. When you get your 20 talent, that does change in the Chrono, but until then, it's just not enough. I, <laughs> looking at Xantic, he switched out from the Octarine into Straight Dagon. I do actually think that's good in this game. Try to just instant burst someone down 
with your with your stun opening. You don't have that many windows for finding these kills, so just instantly burst a hero down. You clean up afterwards in the 4v5. It feels Yuma. good. The issue is just farming to that point. Oh, Yuma, he got doomed immediately. Life drain to try and save him, but it's going to be nowhere near enough. They're still trying to jump in and save this one, but Divine Lama, he's going to get out. Disruption is there. Glimpse on Charlie. You buy a little bit of time here for the timber. So continue running, but Alliance certainly want to chase down this kill. Divine eventually should fall, but the chain's away again. So Charlie's still chasing him down. In comes Thea Lacour from the back with an avalanche, and he actually buys enough space to allow the timber out. But Yuma, he jumped right into the high ground blind, and he got punished real heavily. That's a that's a big kill. They still hold on to the Aegis. Chrono only half a minute away, so that's still within the Aegis timer here for Charlie. Might find a freebie on Hakoda. Can he actually? Oh. No. Ooh. Almost got blocked off by the uh, the ancient camp there. Charlie was. Still gets the ice path here with Hanskin though. Happy days. Maybe not so much though. Mid lane. Jump in for S4. It's gonna be just fine to back his way out though. No issues here for Alliance. When I say that Yuma is back up now, looking to move in. Charlie does That's have Chrono upkeep in mind, so this could be very very dangerous. As he looks for the Chrono onto Xantic, but not quite. Pump fakes it. The blink away was there from the Pugna. Charlie will wait for another moment to try and go after him as Divine Lama now being chased down. It was chained for a moment, but does get the uh, the Lotus Orb off, purges the, off the chains. Jumps right back in onto Hanskin now. Xantic standing behind, but needs to continue avoiding Charlie. It's Divine Lama. He may have gone a bit too far this time around, and he will be punished for it. They, they've still got the output. You, even with that pipe of inside, once they lay on to you, and you have the full Scotty and Charlie, so you mitigate a lot of that healing that you want to stay in tree. They don't give the opening for the Chrono, but it almost feels like you might want to try baiting Charlie into a Chrono at this point, because you're not able to group up in the way you want to here on D2 Hustlers. You're constantly just thinking about Chrono, you're backing off, you're splitting up, trying to cause chaos. They are stalling out the Aegis timing quite a fair bit here, though. Oh. Charlie? The yellow core still messing with him. <laughs> and the thing is, you, you really don't have enough damage to burst down the void this game, it seems like. Numa's still quite far behind in net worth. He's just not at the level that, that Charlie's at at the moment of the void. Like, the Vile Arm is your highest net worth hero on the side of B, uh, on D2 Hustlers, but well, the yellow core. He's going to drop again, it looks like, as he did try to go clear out the creep wave. We'll be punished for it immediately. Neo Hakoda going to pick himself up a bounty room, but that's going to cost his own life, it seems. So there's no rule escape from Chuen. Does actually get enough gold for the axe now, though, so he buys that out immediately. The bounty room actually gave him enough gold. And that's big. This is the teamfight control that D2 Hustlers has been lacking a little bit here. So you've got the muting on a static storm, basically an AoE doom. Prevent the BKBs from flying on. Damage is still an issue. I still feel like you don't have enough for that burst window for to be really effective for the side of D2 Hustlers. It's it's just not enough damage coming through. Like Xantic is still trying to queue up the Dagon, but the progress has been slow. His levels are starting to lag behind here on that Pugna. So it's a little bit tough. Even if you isolate one. Like, if Alliance are split apart, that's when you can find those pickoffs, but they're just sticking together as a team. That they are. The only now up on Charlie. He's just massive on this void. Huss is going to try and run at them here. The Vile Armor, the only one not smoked up. Scan does actually catch some of them, but it, it's very hard to run up that high ground. Knowing Doom and Chrono is both available. Alliance now, they'll go for their own counter smoke. They have vision in that dire triangle, so they want to take the fight right here, right now, as S4 is going to jump in. Thea Lacour is immediately caught out. Twen, he's going to go for the backside. He found Hakoda. The Death Shroud is going to save Hakoda for now, but the chase can continue. Twen is not done. He really wants a disruptor. Hakoda trying his absolute best to survive through this. They need that Aghanim Septic Static Storm to be dropped. 
Oh, it's Antic getting caught by the Doom, but he's still fine. s is the one to go down. Xantic is perfectly fine through this is Charlie. He pops the Chrono. He's gonna try and go after the Timbersaw. Divine Lama is slowly but surely falling, but it's not quite enough yet. No, in fact it will be. Chuan able to secure the kill. There's now a Xantic in the middle of nowhere. Gonna try for the BKB TP out, and there's gonna Ooh. be no bash. No bash to come out for Charlie. But it's still a great team fight. Yeah, I mean you lose S4, but he already dropped the Doom anywhere. Like, the Lotus Orb Doom doesn't feel like it matters all too much as long as you pin down the one target you want. So, Xantic's not able to stand forward and try to heal anyone in this engagement. And D2 Hosterus, they're not able to get the ideal Static Storm that they were gunning for with his Ags. They're not able to get any control in that fight. They were just kited around really badly. Like your ideal fight here for Hustlers is maybe just a good Avalanche toss on a couple of heroes together, then immediately Static Storm on top. Like that's your actual play until you get this hex up on the Vailama, which is still a ways off considering how many times they've been dying here. You have, you don't really have a way of locking someone long enough with your lack of damage. Like no one dies, even if you fully commit. Well, you're gonna try again. Four man smoke up. They'll run into that radiant triangle, but Alliance have left the building. Instead, Alliance looking towards that bottom T2 tower now. Um, they are a little bit hesitant here, Alliance, but actually they will make their way into that tier 2. Not really much in the way of defending. Instead, D2 Hustlers looking to maybe push out the top lane, but no. They'll just take over the Radiant Triangle instead. Divine is going to show up here on the, uh, on the Timber. Try to push out the wave as much as humanly possible. Alliance have been drawn out. Alliance looking to rush right towards that Radiant Triangle and take a big team fight here against Hustlers. Top tower is under <laughs> See if Hustlers realize this is going to happen. It's a He finds a T2 top tower. Now they look to immediately back off. Chuan has made the oh, jump no. in. Static Storm off the mark. Chuan will get his BKB off. And it seems like they should find Hakoda with this. He'll try for a TP and there's still no bashes from Charlie. But it won't matter. He'll have the damage. S4, still going for a little bit more, would love to catch Xantic, but he does blink away. So instead now Alliance, they can look to set up for that T2 top tower instead. And Roshan should be up just around the time it does go down anyway. Yeah, big wins for Alliance. Like, with how mobile Chuan is, it's so hard to pin him down, uh, Teal Yeah, he got caught out skipping the creep wave by Chuan. No remnants left here for the Ember, but it won't matter because Teal is just trapped in the tree line. He will go down. D2 Huss is trying desperate plays to pull this game back their way, but they're just not finding the farm. Like, Charlie's consistently been top of the net worth board in this void. And the Slark, like, Yuma's trying his absolute best to catch up, but even if he does catch up against the void, it just seems like such a challenging game. It is really tough. It's not a straightforward game for the Slark. It does feel like maybe the inactivity early on hurt Yuma a lot like he he's just not able to scale he got a lot of early item picks up pickups just went back to farming his team was giving him space and I think if you managed to take some of these early engagements while the faces void wasn't comfy joining in and you know just start to punish us for a little bit more catch out Chuen you have a better time now 10k deficit is quite big to be fair again that's mainly on Charlie at the moment so all on that one hero, but it's the one hero that does count here as the Hustlers. Even the Xantic's just trying to go for a Hex now. They just need control. They don't have a way of pinning down. They can't rely on the Static Storms from Hakoda. They're kind of missing the mark. It's just hard to pin these heroes down. They're just going on to Divine Lama. He tried to chain away, but he gets caught mid-chain. He's very, very tanky. So the Depth Shroud is going to go down. We'll give him an option to chain away. He will make it out. The Steel Accord back in with the Avalanche. But what else are you going to do here, sir? He was looking for a toss back, but never found one. So Steel Accord will go down once again on this Tiny. And that will open up Roshan completely now for Alliance. So he should be able to practically just snag this one for free. I, I highly doubt D2 Hustlers can afford to try and force a fight. Yeah, it's so tough without the Tiny. Like, Avalanche is... And your one consistent stun outside of an ultimate. 
without that attempt, without that tool, you can't attempt to make a play onto this Roche. Second Roche for Alliance, free shard for them. And opens up the high ground. Like you are free to just dig into these objectives now. With that second of your life, free shard coming out for, Chu for Chuen as well. So more remnants flying around in these fights and a refresh ready to go for Charlie. That's massive. Double BKB use, double Chronosphere in these fights. You will have enough of a window to just kill off most of the heroes on D2 Hustlers. Heck, even just catch out different heroes in separate fights. It's no problem now for the faces forward. For Hustlers, their, their high ground fights are tough to do. They can clear out creep waves. They can try to creep skip. Xantic is trying to get that done right now. At least shoving back some waves here. So stalling for time, but... I don't know where the answers will come from. Like, it doesn't feel like Yuma's just gonna reach that point where he can stand and fight too comfortably, unless they find a split up from Alliance, but for the most part, Alliance have been playing together as a team. A quick BKB TP away from Atlantic Chuen, proving to be a massive issue this game. Looking to go top lane now, Thea Lacour. He's had a pretty rough time on the Tiny. We'll see if he gets caught out here, because Chuen is having a look around to see where he's gone. So he's going to stick around and clear that top creep wave once again. And he's not going to be caught out. Twin and S4 are just going to focus on just skipping the creep wave. As bottom lane, Yuma, looking to try and force them back towards their bottom tier 3 tower. He's going to start forcing it in. Hans going to round to try and slow him down, but Yuma's actually going to make the jump in. From the, the liquid fire that he did take, just the attack slow speed. Oh, the attack speed slow, excuse me. A bit too much to deal with. They might jump in again. Hanskin. This time around, we'll glimmer cape. Ice path, bottom uh, lane. Yuma could be in danger, but we'll pounce away into a TP into the depth route. And he's going to be just fine. Instead, now Divine Llama's been left behind. We'll try for the chain TP out, but the ice path connected. So Divine Llama is going to burn alive here to the damage of Hanskin. They are buying a significant portion of time, but... I just question to who the time is going oh. to. It's Charlie. He has caught the Slark. And Zantic with the Decrepify is going to save Yuma. And Charlie now going to be chased down. A very nice Static Storm, but Yuma jumped out. They're not going to have the damage without him. He's got no pounce charges. He'll refresh here, Charlie. Looking for a Chrono. Not able to find one yet, but the chase is on for Zantic. There should be no way out for the Pugna. He will try for the TP, but it is not enough. Still Yuma, gonna make the jump in again with Thea Lacour. The toss-up is there, but it's not enough to kill off the Void. As S4 is gonna jump in with the Aghanim's Doom. And that'll be Thea Lacour to drop. No buyback available. But now they'll make their move onto S4. Try for the Doom. But he'll just be able to walk away. It's no problem. Yuma, I, I don't think he's feeling confident going up against this Refresh Chrono. Especially with the Aegis up. He's just not feeling it. Can't. You just can't deal with it. The chrono control is the one big thing that will stop you from jumping around. It's a slark here. At least they do see the refresh. They can kind of set up for it now. But this game just gets way more difficult for the hustlers going forward. You're not scaling on your heroes in the way you'd expect them to. Your next big power spikes are at level 25. For Yuma, having that extra essence shift duration does mean you can re-engage fairly freely. But the buyback for Xantic, it stalls out his own Hex timing. The Lama again, he's been frontline for his team. He does have enough oh, Twin. for the Hex, but... Oh. He's going to move right into Hakoda. Death Strand again, going to buy a bit of time, and the TP out is going to be enough. Yuma, in the meantime, disrupted, but got the pounce just in the nick of time. As Thea Lacour's back in again. Thea Lacour is going to go down. D2 Hustlers. Still trying their absolute best, but Alliance is proving to be the better team in game two so far. It's Charlie. Glimsback is there. Yuma. Try and start stealing some stats away. Pounce oh, off boy. the mark. Yuma. He's in the middle of nowhere. He'll get back to the high ground. Back on a Charlie. But he needs some help right now. He is just being surrounded. Perma stun, and he is probably just dead. Charlie. Oh, he's still alive. The Static Storm's not enough. Charlie's gonna make it. He's still got that damn Aegis up. He's fine. Yeah. yeah, this is... It feels impossible. I mean, 
You must spend so much time, time trying, just trying to hit the void. They can't follow up for the kill. Aegis will expire, so the secondary life will be gone, but he'll get a full reset. And he still has another... He still has his Chrono ready to go. Like he didn't have to pop it once more, so... Can't uh, go back into the high ground if they wanted to. Refresh about 60 seconds off. Not too far for the double Chrono usage, the double BKB. And for Hustlers... They, they're just not finding the openings. Like, their big plays are either a massive Static Storm. Oh. Uh-oh. S4 again with the Doom out. Gonna make life hard for Divine Llama, though. He is still very tanky, but... Hakoda also goes down. As Yuma now joins in, but Charlie's still got the Chrono up. He's still moving in. Divine Llama, still the primary target they really want to take down. And he's just completely surrounded. Oh, boy. Alliance is the smothering them at the moment. He bought out the Hex, he didn't even get to use it, so he doesn't have buyback for any sort of re-engage on the high ground. That's 80 seconds without the Timber Saw. That's a good chunk of your damage gone from D2 Hustlers here. And it's a big opening for Alliance. Well, Charlie, he's looking at a poke and prod here with the shards up now. And they're going to try and chip away at the Void. He's proven to be very elusive in every other fight. Charlie's just kind of been unkillable. Midrax now under siege. D2 Hustlers just seemingly have no answers to this. Especially without Divai Lama. Still the highest net worth on the side of D2 Hustlers. And that side of the vice was supposed to be the impact, the, the changing item for D2 Hustlers. But without it now, Charlie's just got free reign with double chronos up. Tips out onto Yuma. They're going to toss back the Void. Oh. With the Static Storm, maybe they can take him out with the Disruption. Ponlo will save the day. The Void is going nowhere. Charlie gets a Chrono with the BKB up right after it's Zantic. That's the second one as well. GG is called. D2 Hustlers have seen enough. Alliance proving to be the much better team in Game 2. And I'll tell you, Alliance, they've recovered very well in this Game 2 as well. Like...